Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video I've got something quite exciting to share with you. I have some products to review. I actually contacted this company called Art and & Fly and asked them if I would be able to review some of their products and they were very kind and sent me a couple of things to try so I am very very grateful. So this company is called Art & Fly. They're a very small company. I don't know where they're based but I think it might be in America because their website was all in American although you can receive art products from their their UK location as well. So they sent me some, I did ask for these because they had actually sent out all their promotional pack but they allowed me to pick a few things so I didn't want to pick too much. So I just asked to try the brush markers and the actual water pens which I'm very excited to try out. So a little bit more about the company. Art & Fly is a boutique supplier of arts and craft products. They specialise in creating high quality drawing and painting materials at affordable price. So I'm actually just reading this off their website. <laughs> They've also put we don't have a physical store, a big office or a big advertising budget. Instead we rely on our products and customers to spread the word. And in return we pass on the savings to you in the form of high quality products for in the form of high quality products at an affordable price so I'm quite excited to try these out the brush markers already look quite appealing there's a good range of colors they also sent me the skin markers and I have done some little bit of research of how much they would cost compared to say Windsor and Newton and Copic markers they are definitely cheaper than Copic markers a pack of five is about 18 pound and a single Copic marker is about three pound 45 whereas this pack was £15 for six. The Windsor and Newton are cheaper and if you look around for other places and if you look at other shops that sell Windsor and Newton markers you will obviously find different deals and everything but it seems like still a good price. £40 for 24 markers, £15 for six skin brush markers. I would have liked to try it out their watercolour and art papers but obviously I didn't want to ask for too much because that seems a bit unfair especially seeing as they'd already posted out their promotional packages to other artists but I'm still really grateful for what I received so thank you so much to the company for sending me these. <laughs> so I'm going to start by opening the brush markers, I mean not the brush markers, the brush, the water brushes. I actually have a water brush, it was quite expensive, I think it was about £6 whereas I think these were £10 for three so I'm really bored to these. I actually got these about a week ago and I it took so much willpower not to open them so I'm quite liking this already. I don't quite understand the push part. I imagine that's to push water out. They feel good as well and you could get a lot of water in there. See I think I have the Kurataki one and the actual water barrel is a lot smaller than this so yeah I quite like that already and I love pink. pink. <laughs> that's nice and squishy. <laughs> so I think there's three different sizes. That's quite a nice one. I could probably get some nice fine deep. I think it's kind of cool that it comes in a set as well. Oh, that's fine. Wow. I have quite... The Kurotaki range doesn't seem to have quite as much diversity with the thinness of the brushes. So that's really nice. And already they feel quite tough as well. That's kind of like a plastic, but it feels nice and tough. It feels durable. <laughs> Now on to the alcohol markers. These are actually brush markers though, so again, that's obviously a bonus point because I love brush markers. And I am new to alcohol markers in general. I do find them a bit difficult to use, but again, it's all practice and trying new things is very good. I already like this case quite a lot like the see-through plastic and being able to see the tops of the lids and everything. I think that's actually a really nice case and obviously it's squishy. <laughs> That's my word of the day, squishy. It's squishy so it could fit in a bag instead of just having a great big box. Yeah, I like this. I already like the packaging. Oh wow, there's a lot of colours. That seems like a good range for 24. I've got about three of each colour. So about three blues, three greens, three yellows, three greys, three reds if you count the orange. Only one purple, but that's fine. I don't use purple a lot. But yeah, I'm already liking those colours. Hold on, I want to take the thing out. There we go. So yeah, then you can see them a bit better. I think I would have liked to have seen this case made out of a stronger plastic, but obviously this is fine. This is good for its purpose. Obviously a nice case here too. I imagine you'd buy your own pencil case for your markers, but 
I do like to see what co the companies, how the companies package their things. Some nice colours there. I am looking forward to using these. So obviously this is a small company, they don't have a lot of colours, but I think they have got 80 in the brush market and 80 in the classic brush tip style. Not a brush tip, it would just be like the bullet nib and the chisel tip. But these barrels feel quite nice, quite tough and durable. I like the little silver detail as well, I think that makes it look quite classy. Uh, it's got a nice kind of, I don't know how you'd call it, hexagon shape, so when it rolls it won't obviously roll off the table which is always good. All this, this is a little bit hard to open, it might be because they haven't been opened before. So there's a chisel tip and there's the brush tip. And already these do smell quite potent. I know I always talk about brush markers, how they smell and everything. These are quite potent, but I don't think it's too bad. I think Copic might be worse actually. They might actually smell worse. So let's get to swatching these on a piece of paper because I am looking forward to it. So onto the actual review of these markers. I noticed it's quite hard to tell which end is the chisel nib and which end is the brush marker. The little graphic at the side is really good though it does tell you and label which end is which but if you're looking at these from a bird's eye view or from the top you wouldn't be able to tell it's only a small detail and that doesn't really bother me but I just thought it would be good to know also I noticed on some of the markers where the colour and number were printed in white ink they were actually starting to rub off. Some of them I didn't even know the number of them, especially with this green colour. The actual number has rubbed off completely so again it's not a major thing and it's not something that really bothers me but it is good to know which colours you're using. Those two things are really minor though and the most important thing is is the actual pigment of the pens and the lay down of the colours and I can say these colours are actually really gorgeous and vibrant. The purple was a really lovely rich tone and so was the dark blue as well as the reds. The reds I really really liked but the royal blue and purple just stole the show I think. The purple especially, it is just a really gorgeous colour. I actually found the caps of the markers to be very accurate to the ink colour. Some of them were obviously a little different than what was inside the marker. Some of the skin tones were more peachy or yellow when the caps were more pink, but again it wasn't something to that bothered me too much. I could obviously just swatch these and just make a note of what colours they were, but for the most part everything did quite match its lid, so that was really good. As for blending, I'm not too sure about blending with these, they seem to do really nicely. As you can see in this example, I was using a really vivid pink and then a skin tone to try and blend them together and make a more desaturated pink and I think it worked quite well. I'm not very good at using alcohol markers right now, I'm still, it's still a bit of a learning curve for me so I'm not quite sure how to blend markers but these seem to be quite nice and again the colours are so nice, I can't get over it. Especially some of the more vivid colours like the red and the blue and the purple, they are just absolutely gorgeous. So I knew this video was going to be quite long, especially with the beginning part of me looking and opening up markers and water brushes, so I actually prepared a line art in advance. And I'll just talk a little bit about the character I'm using. This character, her name is Robin, she is a character from my webcomic but she hasn't showed up yet, and I am quite excited for when she does show up because She's one of those characters that's very interesting to write but she definitely has a negative impact on the characters around her. I would definitely put her in the antagonist category. And with her outfit I wanted to push myself to do different fabrics so for her shirt I decided on a see-through mesh shirt with embroidered flowers and her jacket is supposed to be a very satin silky jacket with puff sleeves and again floral embroidery going up one side of it. As I find fashion is very important for characters, you can convey a lot 
fit with what a character wears and so I really wanted to give her this really high fashion outfit with lots of embroidery and details. The reason I chose to give her a really shiny silky jacket is that I thought it would be a really good excuse to use all the colours that I'd been given because obviously silk and shiny fabrics do reflect the colours around them especially because I thought I'd drawn these flowers with green and pink and red I thought they'd be really nice to be able to reflect that in the jacket. I'm not sure I quite got that effect but I'm still quite happy with the end result nonetheless. And also the see-through fabric was quite hard to pin down as well. I started by putting a layer of the skin tone down first and then some grey on top of it. But talking about the actual markers, I have to say when I first started swatching them I was a bit worried because they seemed a little bit dried out. But that could have just been the paper I was using and the fact that they had not been opened previously. Because as I started to use them I noticed they became much more... they became much more inky and the ink was flowing nicely through the pen, especially on the chisel nib. Now I always find on chis chisel nibs they are much more dry than the than a bullet nib or a brush tip. They seem to be very dry and scratchy so I'm not very keen on using the chisel nib but with these I found these to be very nice. The chisel nib the ink flowed very nicely through it and didn't leave any weird scratchy marks. I have to say I was really excited to use the skin tones because I noticed with a lot of skin tone sets that you can buy they have a lot of peachy colours which are good for lighter skin tones but not so good for darker or middle skin tones. As Robin has quite a tan skin tone it's quite dark. Even in this picture I managed to get it quite close but it could be darker. But what I really like about the Art and Fly set is that they include a lot of sandy colours, what would have more of a yellow tone I would say instead of a peachy tone. There isn't a really dark skin tone in the skin set but in the 24 marker set I did notice it was quite a nice dark brown and I feel that would be very good mixed with the skin tones to create darker skin tones in general. Obviously Art and Fly is a small company but I really hope they get the chance to branch out into more colours and more products because I think they will do really well. I really like these markers, I think they're a really good alternative to Copics. Copics do sometimes feel overrated for what they are and they are very expensive. These Art and Fly markers are not the cheapest but obviously you don't always want to go for the cheapest option. I find these markers to be really good overall with solid and bright colours. They have a nice durable feel to them and they are very easy to hold due to the hexagonal shape of them and obviously they won't fall off the table if you put them on a table because they can't roll so easily as just a normal round barrel. I think I'll definitely be using these for future pieces as I feel they'll blend well with my Windsor and Newton collection. And I would say that perhaps my only complaint about these, although I wouldn't even say it's a complaint, it's more of a personal preference, I do find the smell of these to be quite potent compared to Windsor and Newton. I obviously said at the beginning of the video I think Copic might actually be worse and possibly the strong Longest markers I have ever smelt are the style fine markers which came in the scroller box. They were very nice but they were very very potent. I will perhaps use these when it is warmer and I can have the window open and have my room more well ventilated but until then I think I will save them till the warmer month but I am looking forward to using them again. I do really like these markers and I do recommend them. I do suggest that you stop by the Art and Fly website site. They do have some very nice products there and they do have other things too. I know they've got fine liners and art papers, watercolours. I haven't had a really good look at their website but I, I think I'm going to go back and have a better look at everything. But yes, my overall opinion of their markers is that they are quite a good quality marker especially for the price. Because sometimes you can go for a really cheap option and not be happy with your purchase. I do suggest sometimes going for the middle ground of going for a slightly more expensive marker but ultimately you will probably be happier with your overall experience. <laughs> Thank you. 
So let's talk a little bit more about the process of this piece. I did want to try and make a really nice piece that showcased these markers quite nicely. I feel if I made a bad drawing it would reflect badly on the markers and I didn't want that. So here I'm just adding some Faber-Castell pencils onto the piece as I find that coloured pencil on top of marker looks really good and especially it can give you a bit of a softer look with some of the shading. I really wanted to add some blue to her skin and obviously darken some air areas like her cheeks and nose to give her more of a lively look. So now it's time to talk about the water brushes and I was really looking forward to using these especially as the set had a really fine tipped water brush. I decided for the background of this piece I wanted a nice solid bold colour and I decided to use gouache. Now I found these water brush pens are really good for gouache as gouache is a very interesting paint medium where it can be very dry if you don't have enough water. I find for the best effect of having a nice solid block collar. You want to keep your gouache a very creamy consistency and I find that water brushes are perfect for this because as soon as the paint starts to dry a little bit on your brush you can give the little brush a squeeze on the push button and it will apply more water to the gouache which keeps it nice and creamy and moving nicely across the paper instead of it becoming dry and scratchy. Overall there's not much I can say about the water brushes because I like them, they're really good. I think I might like them slightly more than the markers but I'm not too sure as both products are really nice and again as I said earlier they feel very durable 
when I filled them with water I gave them a good shake to see if they leaked and they didn't, they were very watertight and obviously they can hold up quite a lot of water, in fact they've still got water in them now even after doing this whole picture but I would give these a very good rating, I love the water brushes And so just to finish this picture up, I used a white Posca marker to add some white highlights to the picture and help the drawing pop more from the background. I also added some gold sharpie to her jewellery just to add a bit of extra shimmer and shine. Overall I really like Art and Fly's products, they were very kind to send me along a couple of their things to try and I just want to say one more time that I am very very grateful for the opportunity they gave me to try out their products. They were very kind when I emailed them and, and when they said they would ship them out to me I was very excited. So we're coming up to the end of the video now and I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'm quite new to doing reviews so I hope this was okay to watch. I hope you liked the piece as well as I did work quite hard on it to showcase the products. I am quite happy with this picture, there is a lot I could have improved on and a lot I think I could have executed better but overall I am quite happy with the piece. I think I might turn it into a print but I'm not sure. Let me know if you would like to see a print of this because I would be quite happy to make one. So thank you all very much for watching this video and I hope to see you all next time. Bye bye!